The year is 2005 and Amazon just came out with a new feature, Amazon Prime, free shipping in two days. Consumers everywhere rejoiced and retailers, well, they were, okay, all right, let's be real. It's hard to romanticize shipping, but incredibly, today's story does just that. Perhaps all it takes is just taking a story and throwing it back a few centuries. Hi, my name is Gabe Bauer and this is Top Shelf History, where we combine great stories with great drinks. This is the Prancing Pony. It is the cocktail I have made for you today based on the Pony Express, the ambitious postal network that tried to connect California's Golden Coast to the East's, well, less golden one, with exceptional expediency. It is made with Horse Soldier Bourbon, Hangar One Mandarin Orange Blossom Vodka, and Cafe Granita Coffee Liqueur. Ah, delicious. Now, I don't know about you, but Prior to my research for today's episode, I had absolutely no idea what the Pony Express actually was. See, like a lot of other not so curious Americans about shipping history, I didn't really check to make sure what it actually was. So I thought that it was just the mail service prior to the invention of the automobile. Luckily, I was right. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, I was wrong, and I mean dead wrong. The Pony Express was not a legion of horses that were eventually bested by their mechanical interlopers. No, instead it was just a service that didn't even last three trips around the sun. But that didn't stop it from being cemented in every single American's mind. So if the Pony Express wasn't what I had always assumed, then what was it? Well, it did deliver mail, so point in our favor. And it did have horses, also point in our favor. But that's pretty much all of it that I get in my favor. See, back in the 19th century, there were a lot of different ways to transport mail across the country. Some used horse-drawn carriages, others used boats, and still others used couriers and mailmen that, you know, utilized the excellent technology known as walking. See, technology back in the day didn't evolve to support things like speed. Instead, around the 1850s, people had to go long distances to get pretty much anywhere. If you wanted to go to Europe, you had to get on a boat and go on a months and months long excursion over the Atlantic to finally reach your destination. If you were going out west, you would have to get on some Oregon Trail style travel and to eventually make it there. And there's no guarantee that the group that leaves is the group that shows up. Just put that into your brain. But when California discovered gold in 1849, its population boomed. A year later, it would be an official state in the Union. And 10 years after that, it had grown to 380,000 people. By 1860s standards, that's a lot of people. There was a lot more people now worth writing to on the West Coast. So, three men, William Russell, Alexander Manger, and William Waddell, or Waddle, whichever his name is, I'm sure he'll come back from the dead to tell me, decided to embark on a business venture to connect the East Coast to the West Coast to make shipping a lot faster. How did they do it? Well, they decided let's purchase 400 ponies, and ponies were better than horses because they were lighter and faster, at $200 each, and then create a 1900 mile expressway with nearly 200 stations, connecting St. Joseph's, Missouri in the East to Sacramento, California in the West, and they called it the Pony Express. And when they say express, they meant it. Riders weighing 125 pounds or less would embark on massive journeys, riding 10 miles at full gallop from station to station. The moment that they met up at the next station, they would get off their horse, get on a new horse and ride 10 miles to the next station. And on and on they would go until finally they were relieved by another rider around 75 to 100 miles down the line. Now, sometimes on emergency situations, some riders had to go maybe up to 20 hours at full gallop, switching out horses and going nonstop. And that's just insane. But luckily, the riders were compensated fairly well for their struggles. Mind you, they had to ride throughout the Wild West. And in 1860, the Wild West was still very wild. So they had a lot of dangers there. 
but they were paid $125 a month, which was about four times more than the standard manual labor wages at the time. So not too bad. Plus the Pony Express worked. It no longer took months for a letter to get from the East Coast to the West Coast. At the fastest times it could get there in 10 days. Eventually coming from St. Joseph's, Missouri to Sacramento, California, where it would be then placed on a boat and sent down river to San Francisco to be distributed throughout the state. Now, the Pony Express was doing pretty well. By 1861, they were hoping to secure a government contract for them to last the whole time. But you see, a couple of things were kind of going against them. See, although the Pony Express worked, the Transcontinental Telegraph was also invented, which made communication exceptionally cheap and very efficient and a lot faster. So three points against them, not great. And then also in 1861, a little event happened that may have kind of derailed the whole thing. It was called the Civil War. So without government funding, and despite the fact that they had a subsidy, but without a, an exclusive government contract, the Pony Express was doomed to die and eventually be replaced by its technological overlord, the Transcontinental Telegraph in 1861. I kind of want to ride a horse now, and I want to drink. But since I don't have a horse, let's make our drink and get into the Prancing Pony. Now, to start our cocktail, we're going to place into our shaker one ounce of Horse Soldier bourbon. Now, one thing I love about Horse Soldier is that it is deliciously balanced. It's not too smoky, it's not too sweet, and uh, the, this is the uh, Bronze Horse Soldier. There are three versions you can get. I believe it's bronze, silver, and gold. I actually like the bronze one the most, so it's really, really good. It'll do great for our story, because after all, can we not? expect that the riders of the Pony Express to be called horse soldiers? It only makes sense to me. Now, I don't think that was the original intent of this name, but hey, you know what? We get to do what we want. This is, this is a mixology history show. So let's just take that, pour one ounce in there. Next, we're going to follow that up with one ounce of coffee liqueur because I kind of wanted to paint a picture in which we were going to transport something from the east to the west. And so as our east representative, we're gonna take some Cafe Granita coffee liqueur. And one thing I love about this coffee liqueur is that it is not overtly sweet. A lot of coffee liqueurs, like for example, Kahlua or a, a coffee with cream or something like that can be really sweet and will take away from some of the flavors if you're mixing it with something else in the drink. Now, I want the coffee to come through, but I don't want it to overpower and I don't want the sweetness to you know, tamper down anything from the smokiness in our bourbon or the other elements in our third ingredient here. So let's put in uh, about one ounce of coffee liqueur. Beautiful. Now this is going to really liven up a lot of the delicious smoky roasted flavors that you get both in the bourbon and also of course in the Cafe Granita. And then finally, we're going to introduce our Western element. This is Mandarin Orange Blossom Vodka. Uh, it is delicious, but it's very specific flavor. It is a very specific flavor. And I have found it to be a struggle at times to find particular flavors that work well with this, but let me tell you, including coffee, it is fantastic. So we're gonna put in one ounce of this Mandarin Orange Blossom Vodka. Now, for those of you who don't know, Hangar One is a distillery that is in California. So there is our Western connection. And now we have all three elements. We have our Cafe Granita. It was our Eastern element. We have the Hangar One, our Western element. And they have to go through our horse soldiers in the Pony Express. We have our journey. Now, all we need to do is add some ice to wake up the flavors a little bit and give it a stir. Oh yes, that has chilled the drink down wonderfully. It smells glorious. Into our rocks glass, we are going to strain the remainder of our cocktail. Spill a little bit behind, but that's okay. We don't need that much alcohol. This is a good amount of alcohol. We got three ounces of pure liquor here, so one and done, probably. Now that looks fantastic as it is, but let's be real. There have also been some elements that are, mm, how shall we say, 
smoky, I guess. There's a hidden danger, of course, whenever you're traversing throughout most of the West. You have a 1,900 mile journey from Missouri all the way to California. So for that, I think we have to represent that with a little bit of smoke. So we take our smoker here, and I have some cherry wood shavings that I'm going to pour into the top. This is a really cool little smoker here that I bought from a local company here in Tampa and it is going to do wonders to our flavors. It's gonna add the smokiness that's already in the bourbon. It's gonna make you reflect upon the roasted flavors in the coffee. And now we gotta give it a taste. Like I said, it's cherry wood too, so you're gonna get a little bit of that subtle cherry flavor in between the uh, slight bitterness of the smoke, so. Oh yeah, look at that. It descends right in there. As you know, for any of you who have smoked cocktails before, you need a butane lighter in order to force the smoke down or else it's wanna come straight up. But as you can see, that looks fantastic. Oh, does that not look beautiful? Come on. It just, it's like floating on the lake of delicious booze. But I don't want this to be too smoky, so we're going to put that back down and get our smoke out of there. And then lastly, we're going to throw in some coffee beans as a garnish. But man, that smoke smells so good. And these are whole coffee beans, completely optional. If you think that I'm an idiot for putting it in, that's fine, you know, make your own cocktail. Just tell me how it is, leave a comment. But there you have it, the Prancing Pony. Let's give it a try. Oh yeah, that is delicious. You can taste the smoke. The bitterness of the smoke comes in first, you know, it kind of softens the palate a little bit. You get the complex flavors. I actually think that the cherry smoke does well because it ramps up the horse soldier bourbon flavor. The coffee comes through ever so subtly. It, it kind of just keeps everything together. It's not really the star here. It's more like the the thread on a really nice suit, right? It keeps everything together so that you can look really good. And my goodness, this tastes really good. You get the sweetness and that subtle orange at the back end. Oh, it's so delicious. The smoke is fantastic. Now, if you want your drink to be a little bit more bitter or have a little bit more of a roasted flavor, you can leave the smoke in there longer um, and that will really start to infuse your drink with that smokiness. For me, I kind of wanted the other alcohols to speak more for themselves here, so I didn't let the smoke sit as long. But like I said, if you want more smoke, then just let it sit longer. But that is a fantastic drink. And if I was sitting around the campfire, thinking about, holy Moses, what am I doing? Riding on a pony at you know breakneck speed for a really, really long time, I would want to drink like this, especially while I was sitting out in the wild, wild west, looking up at the stars and thinking about whose package I'm actually delivering. Fantastic. And that sounds like last call. So what about the Pony Express made it so necessary? I mean, if we think about shipping in today's terms, we would simply you know, throw it on a plane or throw it on a ship and then send it from coast to coast, right? It's pretty easy nowadays. It's pretty remarkable how much technology has progressed. But see, back in the day, in 1860, the Panama Canal didn't really exist. That wasn't built until the early 20th century with Teddy Roosevelt, it was actually one of his biggest, I guess you could say, wins in his presidency, which much to the chagrin of the Colombians at the time, but that's a story for another time. But before the Panama Canal, shipping things on a ship from New York to California would take a ridiculously long time. You had two ways of going about it. You could either go through the Arctic, which at certain times during the year was not possible because it was frozen over, or you could go all the way down south, around South America, and then back up to California. Just think of how long that would take. Think of how expensive that would take. So. Without the Panama Canal, shipping was a lot more difficult to go from coast to coast. A lot of domestic shipping in the United States was done either, like I said in the episode, through couriers or through carriages or through something much simpler. Like for example, like putting it on a boat and sending it down the river. But there was no east coast to west coast river 
that was just gonna take you all the way there. There was, it just doesn't exist. It was very necessary at the time and seemed possible to accomplish a true service in which guys would get on the back of horses and ride as fast as they possibly could to get you your mail on time. It probably inspired Jeff Bezos. Let's think about that. And it has inspired me to make this drink. Thank you all so much for watching. If you'd like to check out any of our other historically inspired cocktails, you can find them here, or you can also find them at Rumble and Locals. And if you would like to find any of our exclusive content, which is beyond just this show, they are fantastic. You can join our mailing list at topshelfhistory.com. There we have Behind the Bar. Or you can also become a patron of ours and join our community at locals.com. There we also have our premiere show, which is After Hours. So consider becoming a patron, Please sign up for our email list. You won't regret it. The shows and the cocktails there are fantastic. More Top Shelf History just for you guys. And remember, from all of us here at Top Shelf History, history is better with a drink.